With so many uses and applications of, of Kafka, you want to know the easiest way to start streaming data with infinite possibilities. I'm Amanda Martin with Deephaven, and in this video, we're going to start with zero on Kafka and get you streaming data in no time. Now, there's a lot of videos out there about the theory behind Kafka that discuss brokers and partitions, and we're going to cover none of that because this is the nitty gritty details you need to actually get Kafka up and running. So first things first, if you're new to Kafka, you might be new to Docker as well. If you've never used Docker, it's essentially a way for us to easily share applications. So whether you're on Windows, Linux, Mac like me, or even Raspberry Pi, you need to use Docker. So go to docker.com and get it set up. Pause and get it going. Okay, now that you got Docker set up, we need to actually find the files to get up and running with Kafka. So I like to use a Dockerized version of Kafka called Red Panda. And here we see, I searched for Red Panda Docker Compose.yaml and they have a quick start guide. So I'm gonna search for their quick start guide and I'm gonna search for their Docker Compose. And here it is. So Docker Compose YAML files are essentially the commands that Docker uses to launch services or containers. So we need to run this on our machine. So to run it on my machine, I'm gonna to go to a terminal. I'm gonna make a directory to store this information into that directory and then open up a text-only file called docker-compose.yaml. So for this file, you can see that if I run docker-compose up, oh, can't find anything, nothing in it. I'm gonna to go to my Chrome, I'm gonna copy it, and I'm going to paste it. Now I can see here it says use latest. I'm gonna change the version here to be latest. A lot of other information here about ports and whatnot. Now I'm gonna type Docker Compose up again. And we can see that lots of things come and we have success. Started Red Panda. Okay. Going to their website, you can see they recommend Docker Compose up minus D. That's detached mode. And that means you won't see all of the commands in the background. I like those commands because it means I know when there's a problem. Okay, so now we need to create a topic called Twitch Chat. So this says docker exec, so that means it's running a command on the docker container, interactive mode on the container red panda. And what this does is it creates a topic called Twitch chat, and then our Kafka server is on localhost 9092. Now that number should look familiar to you, because if we go to our docker compose, you can see it's right here. Okay, go to my terminal doesn't matter where you are in your terminal because this is going through the Docker. We have now made a topic called Twitch Chat. I'm going to go to my information, and here it says we're going to produce a topic or produce a message. So not much is there because we need to send a message. Okay, now we sent messages. Okay, next we need to read the messages. With Kafka, reading is called consuming. And so here you can see we just consumed the messages. And then if I have more messages come in, you can see they come over on the right. Now, this is a little slow and non-interactive. Whenever you're doing data science, you're gonna to wanna to go to kind of interactive and automation really quick. And also, you wanna to go to something that, well, it's easier to visualize. This is JSON and it's, it's not very pretty looking. And so we're going to use the power of Docker to visualize our data with Deephaven. I'm going to go back and now I'm going to type in Deephaven docker compose.yaml. I'm going to copy that again so I have it. And you can see they have a quick start guide too. Search for Docker Compose, language Python. I use Python. And so I'm going to click on one of those. And we can see that there's a lot of containers or services that they use. I'm going to copy everything under services because my Docker Compose file already has that information. And I'm going to come down here and paste. I'm not going to read them or fuss with them at all. I'm going to come to my terminal. I'm going to quit the previous Docker Compose. You can see that it gracefully stopped them. That's nice. And I'm going to type Docker Compose up again. 
Now, depending on the containers that you're launching, that might be really, really fast, or it might take a while. Um, really fast on mine, because I think I've probably used it once or twice. Okay, so now that we're up and running, I know how Deephaven works, and well, if you don't, I recommend that you learn fast. If you read this, you'll see that it essentially launches it, and then it goes to localhost 10,000 IDE. So when I open this, you can see that, well, pretty blank. So I'm gonna want to, to do something that makes it not blank. I'm gonna go back to my, my Google. I like Google. And I'm gonna type in Deephaven. Um, let's read a Kafka stream. And let's see, we have something from Confluent. How to connect a Kafka stream Deephaven. Lots of things to read. Hmm. I'm going to go down. We can see that they have a, us making a directory. Ooh. Table append, table stream. That might be useful. I'm looking for commands. Oh, this is a good command. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go to my IDE and paste it. So now we have subscribed to something called test topic. Well, we don't have test topic. We have Twitch chat. And so here I'm going to copy that topic name, Twitch Chat. And I'm going to do the same exact thing, but I'm going to change the topic name. And I'm going to add that one command that I saw. What was it? It says table type append. Because I like it when data stays around. But now we can see that there is still kind of a blankness. But now when I send data to Deephaven, there it goes. So now we can actually see our data a little bit better, but it's still not quite as visual as I want. Um, so to make it that visual thing that we want, we want to start using some Python program to get it working. So I'm going to go into my directory, and I'm going to make a file called mm, send.py. There's my send.py. Now, I'm going to use a Confluent Kafka because it works really, really well with Python. But I don't know all the commands that I want. So, Confluent Kafka Python. And let's see if there's anything that's useful. Here's Confluent Kafka API. I know I want to produce. Wow, lots of information. I, I don't really feel like reading of that. So is there anything else that I can do? Phew, here's a code. I like code. And you can see here it has um, us doing a virtual environment of it, which is a great way to do it. If you don't want to do a virtual environment, you could always do a pip install of Confluent Kafka. And well, I think that's what I'm going to give it a try. Rather than doing all of those local stuff and doing virtual environments, I'm going to do a pip install. So there's my pip install. And look at that. I already have it installed. So next thing is I want to actually use it. So I'm going to go into my Python script. And I'm going to do from Confluent Kafka. I'm going to import a producer. And just in case we want to do it later, a consumer. Now, when we saw it in the terminal, we saw that it was a JSON. And so I'm going to import a JSON as well. A lot of Kafka data works with JSONs. So knowing how Confluent Kafka works is we're going to essentially make a producer. And there we go. Got to spell it right. And in this producer, we're going to need to connect it to our red panda Docker container. So auto correct. Now the terminology for in general using Kafka is we have producer where we have these brackets for the method and then we have curly brackets which is going to have our bootstrap server and so almost you, all the time you're going to do it is going to be some bootstrap server and in this case it's going to be localhost 9092 um, now we have it so that we use 29092 when the kafka is accessed inside the container and 9092 when it's outside how do we know that Go back to our Docker Compose, and you can see that when we're using it outside, we have the 9092. So since I'm going to be using this on my local machine outside of Docker, 
That's going to be what we reference. Yeah. So that's all we need to produce our messages. Now we need to send our message. Well, I need data to send. So I'm going to do 4i in some range. Um, let's do 1 to some big number. And then we want to do pro produce. Yeah, producer dot produce. My spelling is awful. Um, our topic is going to be, hmm, let's see, what's a good name? We'll call it test again. Now in Kafka, you have these keys and you have values. Now you don't need both, but you do need at least one. So I'm going to say my key is none because I don't really care for the key. But I do want a value. And for this, I want my value to be equal to, let's say, I. We always have to send it with a JSON. And so I'm going to send my I value. So that's it. Now that sends my message. Now it's always good to flush your message. I'm going to do producer dot flush and close it up. So there is my send command. We have the topic name test again, and you could, of course, variableize that and whatnot. I'm going to go to my IDE and I'm going to make a new table. We'll call it that topic name. And rather than Twitch chat, I'll call it that test again topic. Now I'm going to go to my Kafka and Python 3 then.py. Let's see what happens. Ooh, there is my data. Okay. So from that, you can see we start off with an empty directory. We Googled a whole bunch of stuff so that we can actually get Kafka up and running. And here we have Kafka going, and now we can do whatever we want with it through our Python script. So you can imagine that now you can plot, you can aggregate, you can join with all of your previous data. Um, if you want to see more about this, I recommend that you go to Deep Haven Examples, where we use quite a bit of information about Kafka to, to get up and running. So with that, check me out on Gitter and I will talk to you later.